Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Tom Stewart here. We got Liz Trotter. Hey, Liz. Hey, y'all. Really special guest today. We have Heather Canning from Unorganized Mom in Jupiter, Florida. Hey, Heather. Hi, guys. Hey, Heather. Got a lot of a uh, lot of cool stuff happening today. Um, if you remember, Heather was with us. Ah, oh, the days blur. Maybe it was a couple of weeks ago. Now you did your national interview with Fox News. Got a lot of public relations, uh, uh, you know, recognition through uh, the work that you're doing with Cleaning for Heroes, and uh, want to get. Another Yay. And we're going to get an update on, on what's going on there. And we're also going to take some time talking about recruiting and hiring in a market that uh, I guess is is, is, is is kind of hard to find people right now because of uh, the unemployment benefits are so attractive. And I guess there's a lot of things uh, working against us. But uh, Heather has uh, some, some some really good programs and a lot of experience in that. And we want to talk about that and, and, and take some questions there as well. Um, Liz, what's going on in your world? Uh, I've just been dealing with a lot of people that um, a lot of coaching around hiring because <laughs> yeah. everybody's struggling with hiring. So uh, I think uh, in our MMA group today, Heather, how long did we spend? Two hours? I'm hiring. Yeah. Yeah. So hiring and then also hiring for office staff, you know, that's a different, that's a different animal altogether. And normally we spend more time talking about hiring for office staff because kind of the, the Heather really has it just dialed in how to hire for technicians. Um, but right now hiring for office or in the past hiring for office staff has kind of been the trickier one, but right now, just hiring, hiring has, has really been a challenge for a lot of people. So, um, hey, hey guys, hey Denise. Oh, Leslie's here too. Hey Leslie. Hi Amber. Uh, good to see you guys. Um, so you guys hit us up with questions early. You know, we're trying to get to those questions earlier in the day. We find when we get to them at the end, we're like <laughs> trying to race through and get really, really fast answers. Also. Yeah, Heather's been crying ever since we got her on the call. So it's been hard. Uh, <laughs> Liz yelled at her. <laughs> I keep motion on my hands and I touch my eyes. Now they won't stop watering. I hate it when I do that too. Tom was saying he does it all the time with sunscreen. <laughs> Actually, I may have put a few words in his mouth. He may not have said he does it all the time, but my story is always so much more entertaining than Tom. <laughs> Oh yeah, your your stories. The story is the operative word. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, stories. Yeah, true stories. Yeah. <sighs> All right, Starling. Hiring is rough. Yeah, they're interviewing us. Oh my gosh! High five, Starling. That is such a good way to put it. That's happening right now, right? I had someone say today, I am on her callback list, and she'll let me know Friday. Awesome. Wow. Uh, yeah. Do, do you believe that this is temporary and once we start getting towards the end of July and uh, presuming that the uh, federal uninsurance funds go away, do you think all this will, is that the primary driver behind this, this tight labor market right now? I think so. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, people are getting paid an extra $600 to sit at home and not have to work. Yeah. The majority of people are going to opt for that $600. Liz just went away. <laughs> she didn't agree with me. <laughs> She'll be back. Um, and and you know we 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 shared some 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 I guess discussion of of legislation. I don't think it's uh, materialized in anything. It looks like a bill yet, but they're talking about coming up with a the next program rather than extending these unemployment benefits. They want to come up with that we're talking like $450 a week to pay to people who've been unemployed who now get a job to subsidize their wages. So they're taking the incentive. Well, this wants to know where she went. I don't know where you went, Liz. You're not here. Can you click on the link again and see if you can get back in? 
This is one of those things that's never happened before. Well, I don't know where everybody else is located, but where we're located, um, getting the numbers in the door like we have been able to is very difficult um, because people are just okay not collecting unemployment or collecting unemployment. Um, for me, how I'm looking at it is I want the people who don't want to or aren't able to collect unemployment because those are going to be the good workers. You know, I don't want people to take the lazy way out to just get that extra money. And, you know, we're like scrambling in a couple of couple of uh, locations to, to, to hire people, which is really cool because we're busier than we thought we'd be. So you know, the demand, the demand is there, um, and the people we are hiring are really good, though. So you know, it's it's kind of a mixed bag. I mean, there've been times that you know you're, you you need people, and you're picking between alternatives that aren't great. And it's like, okay, well, this person's better than nobody, but it's not as not everything that you're hoping for. Um, but we really like the people we're hiring right now. We just can't hire enough of them. So how are um, how are you hiring? How are you interviewing them? What's your have you changed your process now okay. versus pre-COVID? Um, not substantially. I mean, we do a lot through Indeed. We do a lot through Facebook, and a lot of the initial interview is just just. You know, Facebook Messenger and and and, and text. There's a, there's a phone call. Um, not, you know, the whole hiring process. I don't think is contingent as much upon the face to face. But at some point, you know, I think that, that the final process we are asking somebody to come into the office just to to prove that they can can get there and, and do the final, you know, pass if you will. What, have you guys made some some changes? Um, so we have, um, we hold group interviews once a week, pre COVID. Um, we did five people a week was pretty much our number. Um, in since COVID, we have not had to hire anybody. Um, every we say five people, is that five to interview or, or actually hire five people a week? I know. Um, we would interview about five people once a week in a group interview. Got you. Okay. Um, we put our, we put our applicants though through the ringer. We really make them jump through a lot of hoops to even get to the interview process and we don't even talk to them. Well, again, this is pre COVID. Um, so I think we had all of our employees come back except for three. Uh, so we had to start hiring and we didn't want to do that group interview again. So we had to kind of improvise and change, you know, how, how we were doing it. So we now do uh, zoom interviews in a group setting. So you get like five candidates all in the same Zoom meeting? Um, we are doing our second interview tomorrow. And I think on Monday was our first day. I think we had three or four. Um, our number of applicants have gone down a great deal. And the ones that are actually completing the work to get through to the interview process, they're dropping off rapidly. Okay. But I'm not willing to change that. I still feel that I want to keep that high because I think that's really changed um, the type of person that we hire these days. Because if they're willing to jump through hoops to get a job with us, they're going to stick with us. They want a job. Right. What are you guys doing? Well, um, so we're probably the only company I know of that has had really good luck hiring um, recently. I don't know why it's abnormal. Um, the only thing I can think of is in our area, um, Mary Maids, we had Mary Maids, and you know they completely shut down. And all, all of their franchises shut all of their doors. Um, so I think those people, a lot of those people were out looking for work. So that's one thing. And then we're a smaller um, area. You know, there's only 80,000 people in my entire area. And so I think that also uh, plays a part. Uh, I just don't know. We have not had the struggles. We have been doing Zoom meetings. And we're having really, we, we don't do like Heather does. We do one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and they're pretty quick one-on-one um, -on -one meetings. And 
the, the people that we've hired have been really good. Uh, we've gotten we've hired six in the last, uh, I guess I keep saying the last week, but I think it's probably, it's probably been closer to two weeks now, right? I think probably closer to two weeks since I hired these people and they're all still here. So we're, we're liking them all. You've hired six yeah. in, two, in two weeks. How many people have actually come in and gone through the whole interview process with you? Okay, so this is the crazy part to me. So we haven't had anybody coming in, right? We're just doing it on, well, we're doing a Ring Central meeting. Um, but we've only had like 11. Yep. And so, you know, hire six, it's kind of crazy, right? I mean, I, I feel like it's very unusual. It's six people in a very, you know, you know, that's a good amount of people to hire. Yeah. Yeah. And and decent people too. Uh, one of the women is ex-military. Um, two of them have previous cleaning experience. Um, I'm trying to think about the other three. I can't remember, but all all decent people. Like I'm saying decent because I don't want to <laughs> like <laughs> think anything. I, yeah, I, was sharing, no. I was sharing with Heather when you took your sabbatical there a minute ago that you know, we aren't hiring as many people as, as we would like to have, but the quality of, of people, I mean, the people we are hiring, you know, they're, they're coming to work every day. They're doing great work. Yeah. They're, 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 we really like the people we're hiring. We just aren't hiring enough of them at the moment. Yeah. As opposed so to sometimes you're picking between alternatives that you aren't excited about, but you know, we've all been there, but that's not the case right now. We just we're getting a lot of applications, but we're having a hard time closing the gap between again, I say the application, you know, they're the, the initial lead, if you will. You know, probably, I'm I'm interested in a job, but actually getting them into the pipeline and getting them to apply and and having the discussion, it's you know, and, and we, we, we feel like part of it is these are folks just kind of going through the exercise so they can keep, you know, their unemployment insurance uh, active. They really um, are. I think for us, because we are strictly Indeed, that a lot of the people that are coming in through the pipeline don't know how Indeed works because we have a, a whole 24 hour period. And then if you don't do what you need to do, we reject you. And then we send you a letter. Sorry why we rejected you. And they'll, they'll message me back two days later. Oh my gosh, I didn't know this was in here. I didn't know this message was in here. Um, so I'm finding a lot of that. So I don't know if it's people that maybe haven't used the platform before and aren't familiar with it. Okay. Be, That's interesting. We, we, also, we also are using a new chat bot. Um, and I think that maybe that is having something to do with it. So we're getting quick messages when somebody um, is showing interest. And then the, the chat bot is responding really quickly. And um, so I don't know if that's, what? What's that through? Indeed? Through um, Facebook? Um, it's not a Facebook chat bot. It is, we got it through, so we're on a webinar and, oh, you guys know him. What's his name? Um, let, let me just get the information. Is the chat bot, does the chat bot engage when they're on Facebook or is it on your website? Facebook and our website. Oh. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually we should get him on. We should get him on here, Tom, mm -hmm. as a guest. If I can find his. And the rejection letter. Simple, simple growth. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Mike. Mike, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Callahan, Mike Callahan. Yes. Yes. Wait, yeah, we should get him on here. Do you use? Huh? Do I use what? Source autopilot. No. Uh. -uh. No. 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 You don't. You don't have to. I did not know that. Yep. It's a. Uh, it sounds like a fairly new offering that they have. 
One of the things that I like is um, we use it for sales and the chat bot, when they give you the address, it calls for the address, makes you give the address and then goes to Zillow, finds out their house and then spews information to them about, about their home. So, so looks like you have a, a 2,400 square foot house, four bedrooms and three baths. The price for that is blah, blah, blah. Mm. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That is really cool. Yeah, yeah, Bridget, Mike, yeah, everybody, Mike Callahan. Oh no, um, but Blue Skies too. They they're doing some hiring right now too. Um, Blue Skies, uh, name guys. Sean. Sean Day. Yeah. So Linda, are you asking about um, Oh Mike Callahan's simple growth is what I have on here on the little chat bot. So we'll reach out to Mike and see if we can get him to help us out a little bit. Yeah, simple growth. What else are you guys doing that is working? Uh, we were talking earlier, <laughs> Heather and I were um, on our mastermind uh, accountability call this morning and we were, we were telling Tom, we we're literally on that call for two hours talking about different strategies and different things to do and. You know, because uh, one of the one of the women today is a deep dive on, on Wednesdays. We do a deep dive, so we we're doing a deep dive on her company. It was all about hiring, and where she's at is really, really hard to find somebody. She's not getting applicants. The some of the stories she told us about the applicants. Some of them were really bad. <laughs> like wow, and those are the good ones. Like she, the story she gave us were like, so I'm gonna I'm gonna share this story. I don't I don't think she'll care. I'm not gonna give any names. So she hired this gal. She's gonna help out in the office. Oh, not in the office. She's gonna be like the field supervisor, best person she can find, right? She says, okay, this morning it's the first day. She says, okay, I need you to do the health check. Here's the form. You ask everybody the questions. Fill out, you know, all of the information. And then after we get those filled out, then we'll get them their supplies and then we'll move them on with their day. So she said, she said, do you have any questions? She said, no. Sent her off to do the job, went into her office, got to work. And then that night she gets a call from this new, this new employee, the new field manager saying, you know, I'm just not comfortable working here. Um, I'm not gonna be back tomorrow. We sent two people out into the field today that said that they had been in contact with someone. And I really think you should have done something different with that. <laughs> and our friend is, says, she's the one that said, she never showed me a health check that was a problem. Nothing. She was just like, okay, collected them all. Have a good day, y'all. <laughs> and she went out with them. <laughs> oh my God. It, it, blew my mind. it blew my mind when she said that because it's like you go to the grocery store, you go to the bank, you go to the gas station, like you're going to all these places and all of these people could be infected as well. So as long as you're taking the right precautions is what matters. Yeah. yeah. Not good critical thinking skills, not good common sense skills. It was just... It was a rough, and that, that was her best applicant, y'all. The reason I brought that up was that was her best person. So, I mean, it's kind of hard when your best person is, <sighs> oh, Ernie, we will do a webinar with Sean next Monday at four on this Facebook Live channel. Cool. Really, Tom? You didn't tell me. I didn't know. I mean, this is Cleaning Business oh. Today Facebook page, so. Um, that's, that's awesome. I love it. What time are you guys doing that, Ernie? Four o'clock, it looks like. It says Monday at four. Four o'clock, so. It'll be before us. Oh, yeah, I see it now. We have an opening right before us. Oh, good. So, yeah, so we have a jump off there. Okay, that's that's kind of awesome. Um, yay. I uh, can't wait to hear what you guys have, like new stuff and new ideas. Did we come up with anything really? We didn't really come up with anything new and unique, just more. Boots on the ground, gorilla, mark, gorilla hiring, right? Like, you just got to go out there and do the stuff. Um, going to have to do all the things right now is what we came up with. 
uh, can't let anything sit. And her situation is a little bit more desperate in that she she doesn't have the luxury of making it hard to hire right now. She doesn't have the luxury of a long application and a really intense uh, process. She really had to tighten up. And I don't know if you guys know this. I hope you guys all remember this, um, that you, how you hire has to change with, with the, the climate, right? If you have all the employees that you need, you can have <laughs> as as regimented and as tight of a hiring process as you want. And hire the better, right? Only hire the cream of the crop. But sometimes, especially if you're a smaller company, sometimes you you have to hire somebody. Because if you don't get somebody hired, then um, you, you just can't do business. So, sometimes, you know, we hear this all the time. We throw it out there all the time. Like, hire slow, hire fast which is great. In a perfect world, absolutely. Higher slow, higher fast. But, you know, I'm, I'm going to be the first one to tell you that when things are scary and things are hard, higher fast. Higher fast, too, but higher fast. Get some people in there and get some work done so that you get a little bit of relief and you can breathe a little bit easier. Because when there's all that pressure, like you're not going to be making great decisions anyway. Uh, what's Sarah saying here? She said five, three weeks ago, all doing great. She's like me. I know. Knock on wood, Heather. I mean, Sarah, you and me, right? A few more this week. I have a great Heather's in August. Let's say extended unemployment. Yeah, hmm. the unemployment thing. Well, we were talking yeah. earlier, like earlier in the week, about changing the six hundred dollars a week for unemployment to. I guess there's some discussion about a new law where they'll pay $450 a week for somebody who gets a new job. So it sounds like they're going in a direction that when the current uh, current law expires towards the end of July, that if they come back with something more, it's going to be an incentive to get people to work as opposed to an incentive for people not to work. I haven't yeah. heard. I haven't seen time. anything that says that they're going to do the six hundred dollars a week when it expires in July. Um, in the state of Florida, um, unemployment is like not a—it's a joke here. I think twenty-eight percent of the claims that people that have filed for unemployment have actually gotten paid out, and the governor said that it is either people who did not fill out the paperwork correctly or they didn't qualify for it. Is that crazy? Yeah. Wow. And we, laid off wow. 20, we laid off about 20 people and I've not received one piece of paper paperwork to fill out anything for any of the employees. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So that's not I really. really so I guess, no, no, I guess the other 72%, they aren't getting their $600 a week. They're not getting anything, right? Nothing. No. And I think that's why we got very lucky that most of our employees came back because nobody got the money. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So those of us who have been working get a <laughs> hundred million dollars. Yes. Let's push that through Marsha. Come on now. I'm in. Let's go for that. <laughs> yeah. We'll, uh, We'll look at the ISSA resource page and we'll show you how you can send letters to your congressman. <laughs> that, that should be our new grassroots political uh, initiative. Yeah. Uh, somehow I'm thinking that our time and resources might be better spent elsewhere, maybe. <laughs> uh, to, just a guess there. Oh, we haven't asked today. Anybody got any idle or PPP funds? Anybody? Get anybody? any? Let us know. Said, did anybody get any? Any recently? Anybody get any? Yeah. Since yesterday. We had somebody yesterday got uh, idle funds. So I'm wondering if anybody has gotten any idle or since yesterday. Um, where are we, Tom, with the Senate and this decision? Have you heard anything? That's making me insane. Insane. Monday, Monday. Well, my goodness, we don't want you to be insane, Liz. Yes, 
Thank you, Tom. I don't want to be insane. I have things to do today. Um, okay. According to roll call, the Senate may act on Come on. the bill that was passed by the House. They may act on it today. And this article came out earlier today, two o'clock or so, I believe. So, oops, they may have already done something. But they're saying if there's going to be any pushback, there's a couple of senators that don't like the provision, the way that the, the, the House bill will allow a company to um, apply for PPP funds all the way up to the end of 2020. So in December, if you haven't gotten your PPP funds yet, you can apply for them. And there's a couple of senators that say that we've done a really good job of putting PPP funds in the hands of companies that need them. We've also done a really good job of putting a lot of PPP funds in the hands of companies that don't need it. <laughs> and, you know, if anybody needs PPP funds in December, something is really wrong. So they don't want to give people that long to apply for it. And they're suggesting a compromise, something in August. Um, Marco Rubio is kind of pushing back on the 60% threshold. The way the uh, current House bill is written, if It'll let you go from 75% down to 60% of those funds having to be spent on, on payroll related expenses. But if you drop below 60, none of those funds get, get forgiven. It's not prorated. And Rubio wants to change that. They think Wait, which part does he want to change, Tom? The 60% part or the none? He likes the fact that it goes down to 60, but if you wind up spending 58% of those funds on, on payroll. He wants it to be prorated. He doesn't want it to, he, he wants, still wants some of it to be forgiven. He wants to right. use a proration okay. formula. Um, I like they that. That some technical ways that, that they can make those changes, pass it, and the House isn't meeting this week, but there's a way that they can do some type of remote voting and they believe they believe that they've still got a really good chance of getting all of this passed and on the president's desk by the end of the week, which would be good news for for, for us. Well, got, today's Wednesday, so they got this thing called a pro forma session where the House could vote on it without physically being in Washington. Oh, nice. Then why, if they've had this all along, then why do they keep making this big deal every single week? The House won't be here until next week. The The Senate isn't going to be in session until next week. I don't know for sure, but it might have to do with the nature of the vote. Um, the tweaks that the Senate is suggesting, really, they're trying to do it in a way where it's not like changing the, the whole bill where the whole House has to go through and reconsider it again. They're, in essence, they're saying, we approve your bill, but want to change this little thing and that little thing. And I don't know. Um, and the edits are so minor that they can go ahead and do it through this pro forma session. This might, this might help. <gasps> Yay! Yay! I wonder who that's in the paper. It is cool as rock. Yes, I'm only a bill, and I'm sitting here on Capitol Hill. Well, it's a long, long journey to the Capitol City. It's a long, long wait while I'm sitting in committee. But I know I'll be a law someday, at least I hope and pray that I will. Okay. But you did. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that being so much better. <laughs> For sure, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I have memories though. I, you know, not many of those schoolhouse rock things do I remember, but everybody remembers. I'm only a bill. <laughs> uh, Bridget, you're not sure you'll keep it or not. Well, you know what? That's a that's a, a new thinking, right? More people are are having that internal dialogue about whether or not they're going to keep it. I'm guessing it's related to. The interest racking up as of the day you receive it is that why or do you have some other kind of and, reasoning around that and are we referring to the idol are we referring to ppp she she said her idol was funded monday and she's deciding whether or not to keep oh, it. yeah 
Yeah. I don't blame you. It's a lot and of work. Amber finally got her portal. Yay, Amber. Feels good, right? No action on the bill. Thanks, Ernie. Ernie went and checked the, okay. the Senate website. Nothing yet. You know, I, I just I, I just want some answers, y'all. Just I'm, some answers. I'm looking at the idol as an insurance policy. And if I have to pay, you know, the interest after the year for our, the size of our loan, I'm willing to do it because I have no idea what's going to happen in the next 12 months. So you we must be hanging out with really smart people. <laughs> we are. We are. Yeah. Um, and I took ours and we dumped it in a separate bank so we can't see it. So it's like not even there. Yeah. Leslie said that she gave hers, she didn't keep it. I mean, that'll, that'll save something in interest. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh, and she doesn't want the paperwork. Oh, you know, I hadn't even considered that. The paperwork is like, oof. I, I'm not a huge fan of paperwork. If you're not a fan of paperwork, I, I get that. But you know what? That's really saying something, Leslie, for you down there in California. Yeah, that's I feel like that's a really gutsy move in California because everything is just so scary and with your uh, work stop being 30 some odd percent of payroll. Yeah, what 39? Was that what Leslie said hers was, right? Yeah, 39. It used to be. I, I think she's yeah, it used to be. Yeah. Did you hear that, Heather? I My workers yeah. 39 percent. Yeah. You gotta be got to be PPP down. Yeah, you got to be all over GPP too. Sorry, Heather. What? No, at thirty nine percent, you have to make sure that you are charging the right amount of money in order to make profit. And paying the right amount too, right? Yeah. And that that that's tight. That is. When I first heard that, I was telling everybody on the call yesterday. When I first heard that, <laughs> I thought they misspoke. They meant 3.9. <laughs> Obviously not 39. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, she said it's much more reasonable now. Well, thank goodness for that. One, one, uh, of, the things that, that, that Laura, one of the things that Laura shared with us yesterday, if you missed it, though, is there's some, 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 some thinking brewing within the insurance industry that they will basically not count the payroll hours or, or, or salaries accrued when you're in your forgiveness period for PPP, when you're, you work for your workers' comp audit, in essence, meaning you're not having to pay workers' comp for that period of time, which that's not law. I mean, you know, that's not, that hasn't happened yet, but that's discussion amongst uh, the uh, in insurance companies and um, the guys down in Florida. Do I just do a blank? Who are the guys that, that do the uh, the rate? Uh, the, earlier, the when you said, you know, the guys down in Florida earlier, when you said that today, that was Heather. Well, that was Heather. You know, um, <laughs> The organization that, that that comes up with the scope codes and all the uh, does the actuarial stuff on uh, on workers comp um, doesn't matter. It's a four letter acronym. Oh no! And they're trying to trying oh, is to that the NICS code. NCCI, yeah, okay. yeah. So she that would that be yesterday. that would be really awesome if that happened because then we don't because we were kind of fretting about that earlier in terms of. You know, we can't write the uh, workers' comp off to, to we, we can't pay for it with PPP funds. And it was like, people were upset about that. It's like, I can't, you know, I can't get that free money too, but we're not going to have to. The insurance industry might, might give it to us. Let me, um, one, the other day we were on a call and one of the owners on our mastermind group um, didn't know there was a difference of coding between residential cleaning and commercial cleaning and that they weren't paying the right code. Um, so make sure you know what's coded correctly through your workers' comp agency because sometimes the agent doesn't get it right either. And yeah, and I'm actually Laura pointed that out. In all honesty though, if I would, I would at least give consideration to, to looking for another insurance agency, if that were the case, because mm -hmm. that's what you pay those guys for. And 
that's a pretty that's a pretty big that's a pretty big mess up. Yeah, I'm a big oh, advocate yeah. for a broker. We use a broker that handles all of our workers' comp, and they shop it out every year, our general liability, our property insurance, things like that. Um, we have to go through an audit, though, every year. And I know with some agencies, we don't have to, or maybe it's state-mandated, but we have to. And we've been still going through the audit from our workers' comp back in October. And they wow. sent it for 2100 bucks, and you know I've been through this before, and we're back at it. That I'm like, no, you didn't do something right. Go back and work your numbers. Um, so our ops manager, they took all of uh, her salary and dumped it into the wrong bucket. So therefore, they're making wanting us to pay. So knowing your numbers and knowing what you're paying for is so important. Yay, Heather. I can remember fighting with you. Tom, you remember, right? When she first came to Foundations, didn't know any numbers, was like, eh. And now I hear you constantly preaching the numbers, Heather, to everybody. Yeah, I know. And no, we are. I mean, no. Knowing our numbers landed us that quarter of a million dollar contract, yearly contract that we landed. Yeah. So I'm a big, big number pusher now. I'm thinking yeah. <laughs> API group, uh, Tom. Yeah, I mean, we there's a lot of opportunity there. No, no seriously. <laughs> it's a, this is a hard industry and you work really hard and you got a lot of people that are burning a lot of calories and working really hard and Working hard is necessary, but it's not sufficient. If you don't manage the numbers and if you don't know if, what you're charging and what your costs are and all the ancillary costs like insurance, if you're not on top of all of that, you know, you're, you're, you're cleaning a lot of homes and getting nothing to show for it. I actually just remembered a really good question, Tom. So um, we had this one of the business owners um, on a call yesterday was saying, um, asked this question. I was like, oh my gosh, that is, some people are just so smart, you know? So um, every month we do a, a book, a book of the month. And uh, last month we're doing a uh, finalizing, we did profit first. So everybody implemented profit first over the course of the month. And um, this, this business owner was talking about um, the money that's going into taxes. So he has to pay, pay personal his personal taxes, and he pays those quarterly. And he's trying to figure out with the with the money situation the way that it is, like with the PPP and the different monies going out, your profitability is going to be way different. How much do you allocate to to taxes? Like before, for example, easy numbers. Let's say he was before putting in a thousand dollars. Should he double that and put in 2000 Like once we started talking through it, that won't be enough because you did not, your profits didn't double through this, um, especially for the quarter. Chances are good. They're quite a bit more. It was like, wow, we hadn't even really considered that. We we're just still putting the same percentage into taxes. Yeah. And once you figure out what you're you know, let's say let's say your profits did double. That means your taxes are going to be more than double because, you know, there it's tiered, and your marginal rate, the tax you pay on that last dollar, is going to be more if you're making more money. Um, but I would, I would kind of, you know, I wouldn't be anxious to go crazy. I mean, you can go ahead and you can do your your profit first and have an account for that. I don't know if I'd necessarily be sending all of those extra funds to the IRS. Oh, he's or... not paying it. Right. He's not paying it. It's just going into his profit first account. Into right. that account right. so that it's sitting there waiting. That's that's the whole deal with profit first is you have the, the money all in buckets. It's You know what it is? It's like the fancy envelope system from the old days. Yeah. Right? You know, back in the olden days, you got a paycheck, you were poor, you were 20, you lived in a one bedroom apartment, you took your paycheck, you took your 10 envelopes, you put $100 for groceries, $50 for power, $10, you know, whatever. It, that's what it is. It's just a, it, it's like an account. It's a way of like making sure that you have all of your money. And the first thing that you pay is profit. 
Right. And I love it because, say it again, Heather. I, I'm sorry, I keep interrupting. I do believe in his book. Um, I didn't read the book, I did the audio book that he said that's the reason why he developed um, Profit First because his mom used to do it like that in, with the envelopes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, I don't even remember that part. Oh, well, that makes perfect sense to me. Yeah. So I really got turned on to it in a bigger, better, stronger way when um, um, one of the people in our growth group, um, I, I was doing one-on-one -on -one coaching with her uh, a couple years ago, maybe two, three years ago, and she was really struggling financially and not not struggling like going to go out of business struggling, but, you know, um, just hard, like always struggle to make payroll and then tax time would come and, oh, you know, like trying to find the money and also getting a paycheck. The money was just a struggle. It was always hard and always having to figure out break even every single month, to make sure that you're like going to be okay. And it, it was just hard. And I saw her at the convention and she took a break from cleaning for a while and started doing some, some other stuff, got back into cleaning. She went to a convention in Vegas. It was her first convention she'd been to in a while and I asked her how she was doing and she said i'm doing great i started profit first and liz i want to join your big mastermind group because i've got fifteen thousand dollars in the bank i'm telling y'all if she could have had 150 dollars in the bank back in the day she would have been thrilled so i was like okay you know we're, we're gonna especially for small companies that really struggle i'm like and and megan i know megan likes um, mm -hmm. Works with a lot of people with profit first, and you know, yeah. I'm loving me some Megan Lights. If she she says yes, I'm like all hell. Yeah, so the author of this is Mike Mikalowicz, and yeah. you turned me on to. You told me to read Fix This Next, and I'm almost done with it. And I know why he's so good because he mentioned several times in the book that he went to school at Virginia Tech, so he's a hokey. Oh my gosh! <laughs> that's it, Tom. Yeah, that's so it. So tell me, what what do you th what do you think about fix this next? I think it's a I think it's a pretty cool book. I mean, it uh, you know it's very oh, easy to right? get into the it's very easy to get into the mindset that you know I got a million things that I need to to fix in my company. And you probably do, but if you don't do them in the right order, you're not going to get get you know get outcomes. And it helps you prioritize what the priority needs to be. So that is yep. our book for next month, and I don't have it yet. So maybe you can mail me your copy when you're done with it. Well, actually, I say read. I don't. I do this on my phone when I'm like running and falling over stuff. I actually I listen to it, but then when I really want to work a book, like I'm like because we're gonna have it for book club, I know I'm gonna have to be working chapters. So. I, so I, I bought it. The thing I really like about this book is it takes something that looks really hard and seems so hard. Like everybody gets stuck in this and little businesses, big business get, get stuck in this mindset of what do I do next? You know, like so many things to do. My to-do list can be like 90 things long, but what's the most important thing? I love that this book really helps to figure out what's next. I love this. Story, I right? yeah. Yeah, Heather, hierarchy. What? Well, I the reason why I did it for you. Oh. Yeah, she's reading it. Yay, Heather! Are you liking it so far, Heather? I I I, I really liked it. That's why we're having it for book of the month. But Tom, the reason why I suggested it for you is because you're so freaking busy. You have so many companies. And how many companies do you have right now? I have no idea. Nine? A, a bunch. Too many. Too many. He doesn't even know. He doesn't even know. We, we, filed, we filed taxes for 13 different businesses last year. So, I, I get, you know, a lot. More than a rational person should have. And, and I see you, like, all the time trying to do this and trying to do that. And I'm actually super impressed that you're able to juggle all of that stuff because I couldn't. But one time we were on a call and you were like, 
I got too much going on right now. And that's what made me say, check this book out. Because when you got too much, I mean, at some point in time, it doesn't make sense to be working 80 hour week. I know that's not you, Tom, and I know you're still in for the 80 hour week. <laughs> but for a lot of people, you know, it got to be able to. It's got me thinking. That it's got me considering that maybe there's 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 a better way. Not immediately. I've got a few commitments right now that I need to work my way through. All right, yeah, Liz. I'm going to read the book. I'm going to get past chapter four because I'm known for taking book, getting to chapter four and then not finishing. It. Chapter four. <laughs> It's hard I to might do. look at me writing this down, Heather. You see this? I'm writing it down. This Heather, is recorded. Chapter five. Recorded. Yeah, I might have to do <laughs> yeah. the audio book. I've got a number. Um, that, I did the audio book. Sometimes books aren't worth going past chapter four. You know, it's true. This particular book, you know, fix this next is is worth going all the way to the end. But you know, sometimes you get into a book and it's like, you know what? I got better uses of my time, and I, this isn't what I thought it was. Do you want to know the only and sometimes it's not the right timing? Yeah. Say it again, Heather. The only book that I read completely through in the last two years was Drive. And when I saw that that's on our book club, I'm like, yay! I know that book. Yeah, I know that one. Check. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's a great book. I, I mean, I really I can't imagine having a business book club without having drive in it, right? I'll, I'm Sorry, I don't know how we got off on books because anytime Liz is talking books, it's going to go off on a tangent. I, I love me some books. Did, did we want to talk about Tom is not much better. About what? Well. <laughs> about <laughs> books? You're not much better than I am. You read just like I do constantly. It's like we can't stop. Gotta, 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 gotta keep growing, right? You're growing or you're yeah. dying. And we. Don't have time. Well, I'm not a reader. Okay. I'm just a doer. So we're still growing. <laughs> you are a doer. So really? you are really good. You're really good, Heather, at letting other people read the book, tell you what to do, and you're like, okay, I'm doing it, and you do. So Cliff um, Daniel, Cliff Heather, Daniel Pink. <laughs> oh yeah. Is, uh, oh yeah. No, she Heather Heather Day Ugh. asked who, who is the author. Yeah. Dang yeah, that. definitely add it to your something else. We gotta call Heather something else. I can't handle more than one Heather. Um, <laughs> we'll call Heather D. Talk about, about cleaning for heroes. And um, I guess you know you were with us a few weeks ago, Heather Canning, talking about you know your experience with your 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 national debut through uh Fox News and the work that you're doing with, with with Cleaning for Heroes, and you got a ton of publicity, and your phone was ringing. And Liz, I know that you're you're active in that program as well. Um, any any updates there that that we want to share? Okay, so I cannot go anywhere with people saying, "Oh my gosh, you're a celebrity! I saw you on TV." It is hysterical. I love it. My high eye. Um, let's see. I'm not too sure how many we've cleaned to date. Maybe 35, 40. I'm not too sure. Your goal was 30, wasn't it, by the 100. end of the month? No, 100. 100. 100. Oh, 100. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, we've come up with some challenges um, with it, um, but we're plugging through and the staff. Um, Getting them involved has been really amazing. Like they've really gone into some houses. These people really needed the help. And, you know, they came back in tears knowing what they did for somebody. Um, you know, it, it's been really great for them. Wow. 30 yeah. is a lot yeah. though in a row. I mean, that's like one a day. I mean. Yeah. I think what we're going to do a hundred. That's four. crazy. What are you thinking? Oh, no, I have to do four. I have to do four a day. Okay. Well, yeah, more than one a day, Tom. I dream big, right? Well, but, no, but you've done 30. You've been doing it for what, about a month? I know. Uh, I think we started it when I was on the news two weeks ago. Oh, never yeah, mind. two weeks. Okay. Well, 100 is really crazy then. We actually have <laughs> one person in the office dedicated to it. Okay. That's it. That's ambitious. I love that, though, because Heather gets stuff done. I had to catch myself, but she does. She's yeah, amazing. Good job, Tom. She's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. 
And, and actually, Heather, that's one of the reasons why I love working with you, because I feel like you that's um, that's contagious that, you know, your let's do it. Let's get it done. Attitude is, is really contagious that 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 gets other people to want to get things done, too. Yeah. You know, I, I remember talking to uh, the F MA groups originally. I was like, Heather, I, I need you in these groups. I think you would love it. And you were like, yeah, I don't think so, Liz. I'm, I'm not thinking I'm going to like those groups. I'm like, really? I feel like it's like right up your alley. And you're like, I don't need accountability. I, don't, I just don't need that because I'm all over that. I, I get stuff done. And I was like, you're right. But now you got to get the right stuff done, Chip. And, and I need your help in this group. So. <laughs> Well, let me say, I'm, so glad, I'm glad that you pushed me through it because, you know, the relationships that I've been able to take away in the last two months, um, the knowledge has been amazing um, because mm -hmm. other have these amazing ideas. And I love to take those ideas and then kind of put our spin on it or how it's going to work for us. Yeah, I do love that too. I, I just like the cleaning for heroes. That yeah. wasn't your idea. Cleaning for heroes wasn't my idea. <laughs> Uh -uh. I took everything and copied it verbatim from the guy who gave me permission to do it, of course. Yeah. Um, but th those calls for me are like going to convention and learning all of the stuff that we learn when we go to them. So it's been it's been awesome for sure. Yeah, I do love that, too. Yeah. Heather. Heather D says that Heather C, you're amazing. You're an inspiration. Yeah. Listen, if anybody, else, if anybody else is doing cleaning for heroes, totally hit me up. Um, we do have a landing page on our website that we have posted for um, across the country to put everybody's information on there. So when people do go to our website, they can see the other areas that are also offering that service. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know who else is doing it, but I know a few other companies were saying they were going to start doing it. So if anybody on this call is one of those people, absolutely remember she was on Fox News, y'all. <laughs> get over and get tell Heather so that she can get your name on there. I will yeah, say I, I appreciate you getting me on. For anybody who has uh, not ever done the news, like I know, like my biggest goal was to be on the news and to be on a cover of magazine, and then I was like, then I've made it, right? Um, every single time that we've been on the news, our phone has gone insane. So just kind of putting out there, careful what you wish for. Um, and everybody and their mother calls after the air, the news gets aired. Yeah, that's great though. That, that reminds me of Shark Tank, right? People always talk about, they go on Shark Tank. And yeah. Some of the people just go bankrupt because they can't handle all the business that comes their way. Too much <laughs> busy. Yeah. But that's so, not gonna Tom, um, I just looking at the time it's uh two fifty four. You wanna share some stuff? Sure, cleaning business today. Um if you haven't subscribed right here, you put your email, your first name, your last name, you get on our mailing list. We have had a really good summer at Cleaning Business today, had a lot of uh, awesome new content, really proud and excited about uh, what Derek and the team is doing there. Um, we've got our coronavirus, whoops, coronavirus downloads page that we share every um, day when we have this call. If you go all the way down to the bottom, there's a download here, and this is a zip file because um, Laura loaded us up with, with all kinds of really cool information. There's like a half a dozen documents in this download here. So if you click on this, it'll download a zip, and then you can get all the, I guess, supporting documentation for all the programs and pending legislation and changes, the good, the bad, and the ugly that she shared yesterday if you missed yesterday's uh facebook live i would you know I, it would be worth your time to go back and and just find it uh here on on whichever facebook page you're on and and and, and listen to it it's uh it was good it was one of our better ones and we we keep saying laura that's laura bianchini from moody's insurance you guys yes. um so if you haven't heard of her before check her out especially if you're having any kind of struggles with insurance 
Uh, how many did she say? What what portion of her business is residential cleaning town? Do you remember? Not necessarily residential. She does residential and commercial, but eighty percent. Eighty percent in total of her of her day is spent working with cleaning companies, and the little mess up that uh, Heather was sh sharing about knowing somebody whose scopes code was wrong and they didn't have their employees classified right. You know, that's the kind of thing that, that a good agent wouldn't let happen. And Laura's a good agent. I mean, there's a lot of good agents out there, but if, if you're not happy with what you got, I would definitely uh, check Laura out. They know their stuff. And especially yeah. if you're a small company and you don't have workers' comp yet, um, sometimes it's very hard to get uh, written for workers' comp. So I think um, Moody is one of the companies that will pretty much write your policy. Uh, yeah. If uh, you've signed up for PHC um, or taken any of the, uh, the, the the modern cleaning classes, COVID, either one, you'd have gotten an email last night explaining our status on getting the new platform up. Um, the plan is to be up by the end of the week. Um, might happen sooner than that. Um, there's a lot of moving parts trying to get every employee, every, every student associated with the company that they work for and getting that right up front. And that's been, been quite a chore. And <laughs> some people gave us spreadsheets. Some people gave us emails one at a time. And I'm, I'm not, <laughs> we've, got, we've, got, we've got some, some people working, working on our team that, that, uh, I owe some some big favors to for, for helping us figure all this out, but um, we we feel pretty confident that we're going to have the new new site up uh, by Friday. Um, class number. So five. not enrolling anybody right now, right, Tom? Correct. We we have to be silent right now because if everybody if we got people enrolling on the old platform, it just completely blows up everything that they're trying to do to get this straight. But if you can just hang with us for another couple of days and. Friday, the uh, class five of PHC is going to be going out and it's going to be awesome. I think it might be our best class. What do you think, Liz? It's my class. It's my class. Yeah, it's going to be a good class. <laughs> we, we, uh, we, were, we were looking at it today and it is, it's, it's going to be really good. It's going to be really good. I hope so. Yeah. Um, Tom, um, I know we don't want anybody to enroll today, but do you mind still sharing the class so people can see what's in it? Sure, I can do that. This That'd is kind of weird. Thing. I can share it. Just, just don't enroll. <laughs> don't yeah, everybody cover up post-it note, right? Don't, don't anybody look at how you how you sign up for it. Don't show the button. I just want them to see what's in the course. Um, I, I, I think it's really impressive at how much is in the course. Just to give you an idea, I, I'm, I'm the one that was putting together class five which is how do you clean that content surfaces um it also includes furnishings and one other thing i can't remember what um but stop. when i started stop. Yeah, stop. when i first put this together just taking all of the information and trying to put it on slides i had over 70. there's so much content I'm like, okay, I got to like whittle down these slides. So I have slides that have like four pieces of information on them, try and hit them quickly. But this, this information and not just class number five. I mean, I've just been recently working on class. I've spent a lot of work, but um, every single class class is like so full of information that it's kind of shocking to me. Um, Today, we had somebody, um, Janice, actually, the one who's writing all of this content. You you guys know that she's the one that was like one of the big, uh, the big names uh, in this book, right? Uh, uh, Professional House Cleaning Technician's Manual for the HCP course. She's the one that's putting together all this content. She's taken a lot of what was in here, updating it, upgrading it, all the new information that's come out. How old is this, Tom? I mean, it feels new, but I know it's, it's about, new. It's about, well, I don't know. 
that physical copy might be new, but we did that, I'm guessing, <laughs> 10 years ago. Uh, 2011. It says no. copyright 2011. This copy, anyway. Yeah. And it took, us, it took us a number of months to develop that. So, we, I mean, we started the project a long, long time ago. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But a lot of changes since then, and kind of shocking how many new things there are and new information. So, mm. uh, she was asking today, have you guys gotten any feedback? Oh, Leslie, it's so good. I'm glad. But she asked us this. Are there any questions? Do people have any questions? Is there anything that wasn't clear that they wanted more information on? Because Janice is always looking to improve everything. So, Leslie, if you have any of that kind of feedback, that would be golden. We would love to know that. Um, and anybody else that's um, taking it. Go ahead, Tom. I'm sorry. One of, the, one of the really cool things about this and the way that we're doing it, we're putting it all you know, in a learning management system. So it's all digital, right? And you know, you can you can sign up and you can take the classes, you know, the modules inside the classes and when it's convenient, when you've got time for it. But it gives us the opportunity to constantly be revising and updating and tweaking things and making it better. So, um, you know, when you print a book and it's in hard copy and somebody, you know, you go through it and you, you there's a lot of things that just like typos and stuff in that book. If you look hard enough, it's like, gee. You can't fix it because it's on a piece of paper, but we're going to be constantly tweaking this program and your feedback is going to help us do that. I have a question. Us too, Leslie. Yeah, what, Heather? Um, so if I go in and take this class, um, and obviously there's a test, right, to pass it to get the certification, I would imagine. Can I go back in and view it again after I've completed it? Yes. Awesome. The way the way that it works is there's a there's a test at the end, and you have to get an eighty percent in order to pass it. We wanted we felt that that was important because, you know, if you don't have at least eighty percent of it, then then you don't have a good good mastery of, of the subject matter, and you also have to go back and answer any questions you missed to at least demonstrate that you now understand what the right answer is. So in essence, you're going to want to love that. Yeah. I love that so much. I mean, anybody that took the HCT course, I guarantee you, you were frustrated if you didn't get hundred percent on that because you didn't know what you missed. You didn't know what you got wrong. You didn't know what you didn't know. I love this. This was Matt Ricketts idea uh, of doing this. And it, it was like the training that they had to go through when, when he was a pilot. And I'm thinking, well, yeah, you're flying an airplane. It's like, does the step yeah. forward or go back? I'm not sure. That's important stuff. You better know the answer to every one of those questions. Well, I'm like, wow, that's a great best practice, right? I mean, if, it, if, if it's a good enough best practice for a pilot, I, I'm all over it. But how great is that? So if you don't get the answers right, you go back and you find out what the correct answers are and you check that you now understand what the correct answer is. So you still end up with no, all of the knowledge. Oh, to me, that is so amazing. I love that. We are in overtime. So if there are oh, no questions, we'll be here tomorrow at five. Heather, thank you so much for, for, for helping us. Anytime. Thanks for having me. I love hanging out with you guys. And I'm laying in my bed while I'm doing it. <laughs> you guys, thank, you. Bye. thank you. Bye, y'all.